What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again today. I am really excited because I received the brand new Latte Panda Alpha. Now if you're not familiar with this little single board computer, it is, as of making this video, the most powerful consumer single board computer you can buy. It also comes with a premium price tag. Now the model I have here is the Latte Panda Alpha 864 without an activated Windows 10 license. And the price tag on this one? was $358 with free shipping from DF Robot. Now before everybody starts freaking out, I completely understand that I can build a computer for way cheaper than this. I've actually made tutorials on doing that. And if you wanna build a small gaming computer for cheaper than you can get this, you can check those videos out. This is about the form factor here. Now I'm a sucker for single board computers and small form factor high performance PCs. So I definitely had to get my hands on one of these to do some testing. Let's see what comes packaged with the Latte Panda Alpha. First up, we have a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi antenna. Now this is going to connect to the bottom of the board. These have double-sided sticky tape on one side of them, so you can mount it pretty much anywhere you want. This is going to extend the range of her Bluetooth and her Wi-Fi. Next up, you get a few of these plastic risers and screws, just so you're not setting the Latte Panda right on the desk. They also provide you with a European-style plug and a U.S. plug. The Alpha gets its power from a USB Type-C connector. They've also added a specific connector right on the board to send power through a different style connector. I don't have one yet and I haven't seen what it looks like. But this is the included power supply. It'll put out 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, or 10 volts at 5 amps. So you can get up to 50 watts out of this little power supply here. In my test, I've seen it pull up to 25 watts from the wall. Now I did mess around with the Intel tuning utility. I turned the wattage up on the CPU, and I also had a 4 terabyte Western Digital USB 3.0 drive connected. But straight out of the box, you won't see it pull more than 13 watts out of the wall unless you start messing around with it. I own around 35, 40 single board computers and I gotta say that this is the most beautiful single board computer that I've ever seen. Very sleek, super slim design, and overall it just looks super futuristic. So this board wasn't released to compete with the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a $35 single board computer, you can buy them on Amazon all day long. This board is in a class of its own. But I'll still have a ton of comments asking if it's more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and yes it is. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. I just want to give you a little bit of a size comparison between the two because the Latte Panda Alpha is a bit wider and a bit longer. But when we compare the height, the Latte Panda Alpha is shorter than the Raspberry Pi. This is the second Latte Panda that's been released. The first one is here on the right. As you can see, it is a bit smaller, but it's a lot less powerful than the Alpha is. It was prone to getting really hot and throttling. It ran an X58350 quad-core Intel CPU. And ever since that one was released, there was a lot of other companies coming out with these x86-powered single-board computers. Here's the Udo x86 Ultra, and I've done videos on all of these, so if you want to do a search on YouTube, you can find them. And this is the Upboard Squared. So this is actually a decent single board computer powered by an x86 CPU. But performance wise, it doesn't have anything on the Latte Panda Alpha. Now I'm going to talk about the specs of the Latte Panda Alpha. I know you guys have been waiting patiently. Up front we have three full size USB 3.0 ports. Around back we have a USB Type-C for power in. It also supports a display port over USB Type-C because the HDMI will only do 4K at 24 FPS. It'll do 720p at 60 or 1080p at 60 all day long. But if you need 4K 60 out of this board, you will have to buy a USB Type-C display port adapter. 3.5 millimeter audio jack, gigabit ethernet, and if you look at that ethernet port, it's kind of recessed inside of the board and that's how they got this thing to be so thin. And a full-size HDMI port only supports 4K 20fps or 720, 1080 at 60. Now there's a lot more going on with this board. If we look at the spec sheet here, we have 100 GPIO pins. It has an Arduino Leonardo coprocessor built in, an SD card slot, two M.2 connectors, one's an M key and one's an E key. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, there's an E DisplayPort connector for connecting one of their LCD screens to this thing. I mean, this thing is loaded to the hilt. If you're interested in finding out all the little bells and whistles that this board has, I'm going to leave a link to DF Robot in the description. So if I flip the board around, as you can see, we have two M.2 slots. One's an E key, one's an M key. One of them supports PCI X2, one of them supports PCI X4 and we can add an eGPU to this. 
that's going to be my next video will be uploaded in maybe one or two days. All right, so now it's time to go over the bread and butter of this thing. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core M37Y30. This is a dual core 7th generation Intel CPU, four threads, and it will turbo up to 2.6 gigahertz. For the GPU, we have the built-in Intel HD 615 up to 900 megahertz. RAM, 8 gigabytes, DDR3, dual channel, solder to the board, it's 1867 megahertz. For storage, this board does have 64 gigabytes of built-in eMMC, plus you have an SD card slot, and an M.2 slot that will support NVMe SSDs. Connectivity, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, now you will get 5 gigahertz with this and it works really well. Gigabit Ethernet and Bluetooth 4.0 built-in. You do have some choices for the operating system. Windows 10, Linux, and I have heard rumor that somebody got OS X running on here because it has the same CPU setup as one of the MacBooks that Apple's released. We got three USB 3.0 ports. USB Type-C, it will support another USB port or display port out. There's a few other things you can do with this. We do have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack out, full-size HDMI, and 50 times two GPIO connections. So we have 100 GPIO connections on this board. I urge you to check out the website. They have the full specs listed. I couldn't fit everything on the screen. There is more here. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to the operating system. I do have a ton of games that I want to test out here because this is a decently powered single board computer and I want to see how this GPU and CPU combination works with PC games. I do have several more videos coming up. I want to test emulation on here, a bunch of different applications. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments below because I'll have a few more videos on this board coming out very soon. All right, so here we are. This one actually came with Windows 10 on it, but it's not activated. I'm not sure if every single one comes like that or not. As you can see, I got a lot of PC games to test out here, and these are all running from an external USB 3.0 2 terabyte drive. We have the Intel Core M3 7Y30 at one gigahertz. It will turbo up to 2.6, but I notice when I'm playing games, it only goes to about 2.45. For the RAM, 8 gigabytes, 1867 megahertz. It is configured in dual channel, so it will help out this internal Intel HD GPU. And as you can see, it's an Intel HD 615. I did go into the BIOS and I allocated two gigabytes of RAM for the built-in GPU, so it's taken a little away from the system memory, but we should be good to go here. The very first thing I did was see what this thing is running at, and it's running at seven watts. So I went ahead and downloaded the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, and I jacked it up a little bit just for a benchmark and some of these games here. Now, I do notice a little bit of difference. I do need to go through and tweak it out and see exactly what works, but I went to 15 watts. And I don't think it's really the wattage that's helping me out in these benchmarks and games. I think it's more of the turbo time that we have. It's set to 28 seconds, so it will turbo up to 2.6 for 28 seconds. Went ahead and set it to 96. And I ran a quick 3D Mark Night Raid benchmark at 7 watts, we scored a 3,374. At 15 watts in the turbo time window set to 96 seconds, it scored a 3,792. I wouldn't recommend going all the way up to 15 watts. I'm trying to find a real sweet spot here, and I also want to undervolt the CPU so we can keep it a lot cooler. But in all of these tests here, left it at 15 watts with that turbo time window set to 96 seconds. When you do have this thing set to 15 watts and you haven't undervolted the CPU or anything like that, it gets pretty hot. And you'll see that in these tests here, but in later videos, I'm going to work on tweaking it down, seeing exactly what wattage is best for this CPU. We can keep it a lot cooler than it's getting in this video. So the first game I wanted to test was Doom. I do have Afterburner running. We can see the memory usage, CPU temperature, CPU usage, RAM usage, and the wattage. Over on the right hand side we have the FPS listed also inside of the game. This is using the Vulcan API. I wish every game used Vulcan. As for the settings in Doom, 720p, all low settings. We're getting close to 50 FPS constantly. You will see it drop down every once in a while, but it does a great job for a single board computer with an integrated GPU. I turn VSync off in every game you're about to see, so if you see some screen tearing, that's the reason why. This game will do 30 FPS, 1080p, low settings with VSync on, and it does a constant 30. 
I just wanted to see how high we could get it here, and at 720p, we're doing 40 to 50 FPS depending on what's going on. Next up, Overwatch 720p low settings. You can see there's a lot going on right now. FPS is listed in the top left hand corner. Again, low settings 1080p, this will do 30 FPS all day. Had to test out Skyrim and for some reason my audio wasn't captured. I was using an Elgato HD60. I had sound coming from the television but it wasn't transferred to my recording for some reason. I've had this happen in the past with this game and Crisis. I guess it's something to do with the older games. Not really sure what's going on. Either way, 720p, medium settings. If you're just cruising around Skyrim, you're going to get a constant 60 FPS, but when we get into battle, like you see here, it's going to drop down. Obviously, it would perform better on low settings, but I wanted to see what it would do on medium. I think it's still playable like this. I had to throw this in because I'm going to get a lot of comments on it. Fortnite, 720p, low settings. I tried to find some people so I could get some explosions and things going, but you know how lonely Fortnite can be sometimes. Played for about 10 minutes and I just had enough of it. I think the frame rate will drop significantly when we get into gunfire with a bunch of people on screen. As you can see, I'm doing a jump here, drop down to 25 FPS. So it's not great, but you can play it. In my opinion, this just isn't a really well optimized game yet. It has gotten better over the last few months, but it's not there yet. I had to test it out, Crisis. It's an older game, I completely understand that, but there's gonna be people asking me. Again, my sound was not recorded here. And I also had to put it in window mode, where at 720p, medium settings, it's doing a pretty good job here, but there's not a lot going on. I'm going to go through the woods and we'll get up to the first outpost. There's lots of gunfire going on. There's a few people on screen. The frame rate has significantly dropped. But I am at medium settings and you can get better performance on low. And for the final game, GTA 5. 720p normal settings. I do have VSync off right now, but I will turn it on in just a second. I've noticed with these integrated graphics, sometimes if I have VSync off, it performs worse. I know it sounds weird and it could just be a fluke, but I have experienced this with other built in Intel HD GPUs. All right, so this is with VSync set to half. We're not gonna get 60 FPS out of this board on this game, so I wanna see if we can get at least a steady 30. And I don't think it's gonna happen here. Any way you look at it, it's pretty awesome to see GTA 5 running natively on a single board computer. Now I know it's not running perfectly, but in a pinch, you could play GTA 5 720p, 30 FPS, might dip down every once in a while, on the Latte Panda Alpha, which is pretty impressive. So my first thoughts on the Latte Panda Alpha. This little board rocks. I actually wasn't expecting to get the performance that we just saw out of this tiny little board. Yes, the price is high, but you're paying for the form factor here, and that's really what it comes down to. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, yes, you can spend this money elsewhere and get better performance, but you're not gonna come close to this form factor here. Over the past couple years, I've tested a lot of single board computers, ARM based and x86 based. This is by far the most powerful single board computer that I've ever come across. 
Now this was the initial video. I will have more coming. I'm going to test a ton of emulators. I want to test some applications running in Windows like Photoshop and some video editing software. I'm also going to install Linux on here and see how it performs there. So if you're interested in seeing more, just keep an eye on the channel. I do have a lot more coming up on this board. I'm going to create a video playlist and I'm going to add all of my Latte Panda Alpha videos to that. Link for it is in the description. In the next video I upload on the Alpha, I'm probably going to be adding a GTX 1050 Ti to this just to see what it does. We're going to retest some of the games and see the performance increase by adding an external GPU. And real quick, one of my good buddies and fellow YouTuber, Nova Spirit Tech, just picked one of these boards up. He's going to be having a ton of videos out on this thing, so I recommend checking his channel out. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you want to see running on this in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.